we're back. We're back here at the very cool and lovely corner of Glenwood and Lunch. We're up here on the stage at the Heartland Cafe. We've got a lot of customers in here today because the heat, even in Cool Rogers Park, has driven them indoors. So uh, let's hear it from the crowd again. How's everybody having a good time? Oh, we love it. We love it. Come back every week. Eating All right. breakfast. I have uh, at before the break. I gave false information. I said we were going to have the beach poets up next, but because of uh, microphones and things, we're going to put them as the finale of the show. And we're going to bring up uh, a very good friend of ours, Dave Kraft, who for many many years has been educating us and informing us about nuclear energy, alternatives to challenges against, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And today, I think we're going to focus on Fukushima, the nuclear disaster, the ever ongoing nuclear disaster and I got to tell you I think he's going to mention about how that has some pretty big implications for us here in Illinois. Good morning Dave. Good morning Dave. Good to see you both again. How are really, you? Really it's great to see you. Thanks. Not Not unlike our previous guest you have been single-handedly responsible for uh, keeping uh, focus on this subject matter, your subject matter of the nuclear energy information. Um, and I want to thank you for your continued uh, hard work, great activism on behalf of uh, all of us to stay informed about um, some pretty serious issues you know, related to both the environment and our technological uh, goofiness. Thanks, Katie. Uh, appreciate uh, it. You a exaggerate lot. a little bit. It's not single-handed. There are a lot of people involved with NEIS in Illinois and other groups. Yeah, we should take credit too. Yeah, but you've kept it. You've kept it going. NEIS. Well, thanks. So, what are you up to? What well, has got you know, your attention? Well, who was reading Lenin on the cult of personality and wants to attack it? <laughs> <laughs> You're yeah. a great guy. You've yeah. done great. You really have. Well, I can see why folks don't want to have me on their shows because it usually ends up being the Davy Downer show because I always bring bad news. And today, I guess we have to go a little bit on the bad news before we get to the good news. So, okay, um, so there is some good news? Lay it on us. What's yeah. the bad news? Well, bad news is uh, the Fukushima disaster, at least in, in most of the press, has really receded into the background. You know, it's so, it's so 2011, the, it, it's not really covered that much anymore until Today, the, yesterday. this past week. Yeah. And that's what really was a surprise. You know, it's a coincidence that you had me on the show at this time. Uh, we but, planned it that way. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you did. But, um, no, what people need to understand is that this disaster, first of all, is a never-ending story. Yeah. This is a cleanup that's going to take at minimum four decades. It's going to cost at minimum $200 billion, not yen, dollars, minimum. So this goes on and on. Uh, those who followed the press accounts last year know that the Japanese media are a lot nuanced and different than ours in the sense that they, co they really tow the company line. They don't get into investigative stuff very much. So they've just been regurgitating pretty much what the government says and what the utility says. So what's different? What occurred this week, uh, and actually over the last few weeks, uh, I'll lead up to it. Three weeks ago, for the first time since the disaster, and that's the second piece I want to mention, is you are now prohibited from calling it the Fukushima accident. It was no accident. It was a deliberate. It was intentional. It was known in advance. The company and the government knew this would happen. They counted the beans and saved money. And a lot of people died and are going to die because of it. So it is no longer, none of these are to be considered accidents because we know how bad they can get. But three weeks ago, since the disaster unfolded, the prime minister announced we're going to start nuclear power plants in Japan again. They had all 54 of them shut down. Now we're going to start them up again against the objection of the local administrators, against the 74% of the Japanese population who no longer want to go down the nuclear path. This really riled up the Japanese. And here's the good news part. At first, a couple thousand people showed up in front of Prime Minister Noda's office. A week later, 10,000 Japanese showed up in front of Prime Minister Noda's office. And a week after that, depending on who you talk to, as many as 150,000 Japanese wow. showed up in front of his office. Hallelujah. Now, the significance of this is in Japan, huge, huge. there's a saying, 
the nail that sticks up gets hammered down. It's a very compliant society. Right. So for 150,000 Japanese to get their underwear twisted enough to come out into the streets yeah. and make the Chicago NATO thing look like uh, you know, a walk in the Pity park, patty. which it was, is phenomenal. Yeah. And the Japanese should be applauded for standing up to their government and saying, we don't want a nuclear future. You got it wrong, Noda, and we're not going away. Uh, we did some actions here in Chicago, uh, not just NEIS, but some of the newer groups that are forming, uh, Nuclear Free Illinois. It's good to see people are getting energized again. We went in front of the Japanese consulate, got letters signed, tried to deliver them to the uh, consul general here, whose name is uh, Yoshi, uh, Yoshifumi Okamura. He refused to see us, wouldn't take the letters. It's very typical, you know, they circle the wagons when they're being confronted. Mm -hmm. So the nuclear industry is being confronted in Japan, worldwide. It's being shut down in Germany and many other countries. And back here in the United States, we're still around and we're still going to take it to them. And are we still, Illinois is still the place with the most... Uh concentration of uh, nuclear uh, energy Yeah, Illinois is plants. still number one. Plants. We got 14 reactors here, 11 are operating, and three are shut we, down we permanently. We have 11 nuclear reactors in the state of Illinois. Yes. Not, not just in the state, surrounding the state. us right here. Well, actually, we have 17 closer to Chicago than Chernobyl was to Kiev. You go, let's just say that again for the listening audience. We got a situation here where we are surrounded by the evil nuclear plants. How many we got? 17? 17 are closer to Chicago than Chernobyl is the distance to Kiev, which occurred 26 years ago. So uh, if we were a country, we would be the 14th largest nuclear power in the world here in Illinois. Wow. We're now, the big dead already. Yeah. Well, you know. <laughs> but we're going to fight. We're going to fight. Now, how do we bring it back to Illinois? Well, there, there are several threads which do lead back here. And the first one we pointed out last year. Illinois has four reactors, two at Dresden near Morris, Illinois, 60 miles southwest, two on the Mississippi River out in the Quad Cities area, uh, which are the exact same design as the three reactors at Fukushima that exploded, melted down, and are now a, a trash heap. We've got four here. There are 23 sprinkled throughout the United States, and Exelon owns a whole bunch of them. So one of the tasks that we have at NEIS and other groups around the country are to get the nuclear regula regulators to shut those reactors down until they can prove that what happened at Fukushima will not happen here. And of course we're getting a lot of flack about that. And, and naysayers will say, wait a minute, Fukush Fukushima wouldn't have happened without the, uh, the um, tidal wave. Ah, uh, now that's where this report comes in because the report that was just issued two days ago by the Japanese parliament contradicts the conventional wisdom right. about how this accident, uh, I did it, see, it's so easy to do. It's not how an this accident, disaster, disaster unfolded. <coughs> The conventional wisdom was, oh, we couldn't have done anything. It was an all-time record-setting tsunami. It wiped out our backup power. This report indicates that that may be a lot of baloney, that the disaster actually started 30 minutes before the tsunami arrived because of the earthquake. And here's the significance for Illinois and uh, the United States. <laughs> because What's that fault we have down Madrid. there by Cape Girardeau? <laughs> Well, there are a lot of faults, and a lot of them are in Washington, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> the significance yeah. for us, though, is that the utilities here have focused on beefing up their backup power, which is, you know, responding to the idea that a tsunami or something could knock out the power. They've done virtually nothing about earthquake or other kind of structural, shaking responses, structural, structural response. Uh -huh. So, in essence, all the work they've done in the United States since the disaster last year could mean nothing in the case of an earthquake. Yeah. So we have to really force this issue. And this report from Japan, which is absolutely scathing, they name names, they, they point fingers, they talk about the corruption and collusion that took place between government, the utility, TEPCO, and, and the, the regulators, and, and, and just laid it out as a roadmap. The travesty is, if you were to take this report and take out TEPCO and substitute Exelon or Duke Power or Florida Power and Light, if you were to take out NISA and substitute the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission, if you were to take out the government and write in President Obama, you could still read the report and say, uh-huh, it's happening. Mm. So this is not a uniquely Japanese situation. This is the nuclear industry worldwide, and these guys in the Japanese parliament pull their pants down for the world to see. 
Wow. Is there any, you br brought up all the faults in Washington. Um, is there any indication that Obama is at all moving away from his, uh, you know, uh, position, which has been that nuclear power is something we should rely on? Well, we've had to Is gauge success. Is he nuanced success. it at all? Yeah, we, we have to uh, tailor make our definition of success. His first two State of the Union addresses uh, said we're going to embrace nuclear and we're going to expand it, we're going to do this and that. Right. Uh, this year, he, he made no mention of nuclear power at all, so I consider that a plus. little plus. Mm -hmm. But still, what we need in Washington are people saying, the nuclear age is over, folks. Get over it. It's time for an energy resource that doesn't have to... That doesn't poison us. Poison us, and doesn't have to thermally pollute our rivers like the Dresden Nuclear Power Station is right now as we speak. Because of the so-called heat wave and the need for electricity, right. they were given a license variation by the Illinois EPA to dump more hot water into the rivers and cook the rivers. We predicted this Let in people know where Dresden is located. 60 miles southwest of Chicago. So these reactors in a global warming world won't function. They will cook the rivers, they will pollute them, and there's a good chance that they still might melt down anyway. Yeah, well, I get what you mean about bad news. Now, Dave, are you... Uh, Why am I smiling? Are, there's a Why lot are of, you smiling? A lot of countries are still going for nuclear power in some way. Some people, like Germany, I know, it seems like they're cutting back. Uh, is nuclear something that you would take off the table completely? Is there a place for it in the future of, of mankind, humankind, Absolutely not. womankind? No. And I would lump into that category coal or any energy resource that is going to rely on producing steam to turn turbines. In a global warming world, you don't make Just it like hot now, to make it cool. The most, no, the most precious commodity is going to be water. Yep. And these reactors are water hogs. So the question is, do you want your air conditioning or do you want the water to irrigate your crops and feed you or to give you drinking water? Right. It's going to be a tussle over water and nuclear flunks. And so does coal, so does natural gas. We have to move away from the steam cycle completely and move towards a carbon-free, nuclear-free future. Dave, you've been at this a long time. Do you see a younger generation of technocrats coming up who know what you just said is true, who embrace it? There, there's a whole army of people out there who are trying to create a better world and trying to implement these technologies and processes. We have to go deeper than that, though. It's not just about new technology. It's about the fact that this society that we've created is not sustainable and it's not functional. So to produce more electrons by solar power or by wind power just to feed an energy addiction is like the methadone approach. We can't do that. Huh. We have to substantially rethink society so it's more sustainable and move us to use less energy, but appropriate energy. Well, obviously, this is a person we should do a whole yeah, hour I with think one of these days. We'll have to have you back. One but of these days. we got a couple more minutes. Tell people what is going on that yeah. would further inform them and anything that they could attend or look up on the web. Yes, there are some events coming how up. How they could get involved. And definitely, I'll make note of it now, I'll say it twice. Our website is www. NEIS.org. That's our acronym, NEIS.org. We will be posting updates, uh, certainly about the Japanese situation, but also about the Illinois situation as more reactors continue to cook our rivers throughout this coming summer. Um, what we do ask people to do now, though, we have to support the Japanese because if Japan falls, the world nuclear power industry will fall with it. We have to make sure the Japanese people win. And so we have letters that we're asking people to sign uh, that we will deliver to the Council General here one way or another. But we're going to push, push the issue here in support of the Japanese people. And we will be continually harassing, if need be, the Council General's office until they start listening to us. So um, we ask people to go to the website. We will have these letters available to sign and submit. And this coming Wednesday in Grant Park at 6 o'clock, we're going to go down uh, prior to the Frozen Planet show, which is going to take place with the That's Grant the Park 11th, Symphony. That's the 11th, right? On Wednesday. the 11th of, of uh, July. And we're going to be leafleting the crowd at that point. So we welcome you to come on down and join us by the Bean at 6 o'clock that night. Uh, how many people here in this uh, live listening audience today want to sign one of these letters? Let's hear it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 That's great. Anna, you're in charge. Thank you. All right, Dave, uh, 
It's so great to have six you. Six o'clock Wednesday night at the Bean down in Millennium Park. And what does your shirt say? It's in some different language. <laughs> I'm a, uh, ich bin ein Stürfel. It's a German phrase. This was given to me by some German activists when I did a presentation in Germany. Stürfel is a noun that is derived from the verb storen, which means to stir. So essentially, I You're stir a stirring things up. up guy. I'm a troublemaker. I'm glad yeah. I asked. Thanks. Let's have a big round of applause for Dave Kraft Thank you of so the much, Nuclear Dave. Energy Information Service. For Next all time, you do. good news. www.neis.org. Right Thank on. you so much. And uh, right. Eli Downtown is uh, going to play us a short musical break.